What's up, Live Lean Nation? Brad Duffer here from LiveLeanTV.com. Now guys, on today's episode, you're gonna learn about insulin and how you can manipulate it to become a fat-burning machine for life. But first, you can also listen to this episode over on our Live Lean TV podcast. If you don't know what podcasts are, if you haven't been listening, just open up your podcast app on your phone, search for Live Lean TV, then subscribe to the podcast and listen while you work out or during your travel. Or if you prefer to read the information, you can also check out the blog post from this video at liveleantv.com. We'll put the link down below. All right, so let's get into today's episode. Over the past few videos, I've been going into detail on the role that your hormones play with your fitness results. So as I've said, in the short term, it's important to be in a calorie deficit to lose fat and to be in a calorie surplus to build muscle. But if you really want to live lean for life and turn your body into a fat burning and muscle building machine for life, you need to focus on long long-term hormonal health. So today I want to talk about one of the most important hormones that can help with this, insulin. So it's amazing how much responsibility the approximately 50 different hormones have on all the cells in your body. Some of these hormones play a larger role in the fat gain or the fat loss process. So I've already done videos on the importance of thyroid hormones, as well as the hunger decreasing leptin hormone and the hunger increasing hormone ghrelin. So over the next few episodes, I'm also going to be spotlighting other important hormones such as glucagon, growth hormone, and testosterone. But today, let's get deep into the truth about insulin. So guys, insulin is a hormone secreted immediately from your pancreas following a meal. The role of insulin is simply to control the amount of sugar in the blood by moving it into the cells where it can be used by the body for energy. So insulin can have a positive and negative effect on the body. Here's the positive side of insulin. Insulin plays a major role in building muscle when produced in sufficient amounts. After a good workout, your muscles are in a catabolic state, meaning they're broken down, and your body loses some muscle glycogen. So if muscle building is your goal, consuming a high glycemic carbohydrate after a workout creates an insulin spike, thus providing an excellent delivery system for the carbohydrates and the amino acids from the protein to reach the muscle cells. This can help break you out of the catabolic state and puts you into an anabolic state to help rebuild a strong stronger muscle and replenish your previously depleted muscle glycogen levels. So that was the positive side. Now here's the negative side of insulin. Insulin plays a negative role when produced in excess. So when refined carbohydrates are overconsumed, they break down into sugar and quickly enter the bloodstream. A large amount of insulin is then required to clear that sugar from the bloodstream. And here's the thing guys, at any time, your bloodstream usually only contains approximately four to five grams of sugar in the blood. That's only about one teaspoon. So think about what happens to your body's hormonal balance when you eat a quote, low fat, refined carbohydrate like a cinnamon roll that contains 60 grams of sugar. So here's an example of how eating that low fat cinnamon roll can turn into a belly fat filled mess. 60 grams of sugar quickly enters the bloodstream. A massive amount of insulin is then released to remove the excess sugar from the bloodstream. So approximately 30% of the sugar, 18 grams, can be burned as immediate energy. Then approximately 30% of the sugar, another 18 grams, can be stored as glycogen in your liver and muscle cells and burned as short-term energy, and I gotta put this out there, when the capacity is available. More on that later. Then the remaining 40% of the sugar, which is 24 grams, can be potentially stored as long-term energy in the fat Fat cells, in other words, body fat. So insulin then releases a fat storing enzyme called LPL. So when this LPL enzyme is released, it is on a mission to store everything as fat, especially as belly fat. So essentially it turns you into a fat storing machine. So here's an even scary example that affects a lot of people. So your muscle and liver glycogen tanks have a limited capacity to store short-term energy. So remember the video that I did on the spillover effect? When your glycogen tanks are already full, the following happens. Once again, approximately 30% of the sugar, 18 grams, can be burned as immediate energy but 0% of the sugar is stored as glycogen since your glycogen tanks are already full. This means potentially 70% of that sugar, 42 grams, can be stored as body fat. So the takeaway point is here, guys, the next time you read a label that says cinnamon rolls are low fat, think again. 
Your body is designed to burn store fat for the majority of its energy requirements. But when you have a continuous high insulin levels caused by over consuming the refined carbohydrates and not working out enough, your body continues to burn sugar for energy and stores the excess sugar as body fat rather than burning the already existing stored body fat for energy. So another negative effect of insulin is how it reacts with the other fat burning agents in the body. So for example, carnitine is a compound in the body that helps shuttle fatty acids into your cells mitochondria to be burned as fuel. However, when insulin is in excess, it lowers the level of carnitine in the body, thus slowing your fat burning potential. And this leads to the topic of insulin sensitivity versus insulin resistance. So if you've been struggling with with fat gain and the majority of your snacks and meals are primarily comprised of carbohydrates, you may be suffering from insulin resistance. This simply means guys that over time your cells become less affected by insulin. So think of it this way, the cells in your body have doors and when you're suffering from insulin resistance, the doors to open the cells are locked. But when you're healthy and you're insulin sensitive, the insulin acts as the key to open the doors to the cells to let in the nutrients to be burned for energy. But when you're suffering from insulin resistance, the keys don't work. They don't open the door, so the pancreas just continues to produce more and more insulin. In other words, when your body is suffering from insulin resistance, you just don't process carbohydrates well, therefore you're more likely to store them as fat rather than burn them for energy. We call that a fail. So the opposite of this is insulin sensitivity, meaning you do process carbohydrates well, you store them in the muscles and the liver cells, and you burn them off for immediate and short-term energy. We call this gains. So how can you increase your insulin sensitivity and turn your body into a long-term fat burning machine? The major keys are simple. Lower your carbohydrate intake. So the higher your carbohydrate consumption, the higher the potential for your insulin levels. So depending on what your goals are and your activity level, I usually recommend between 50 to 150 grams of mainly complex carbohydrates per day with one high carbohydrate weekly cheat meal. Another tip is to increase the amount of protein in your diet. So replace the calories from carbohydrates with high quality sources of lean muscle building protein. And guys, protein, it does not induce insulin as much as carbohydrates and can also help keep you feeling full, thus limiting your sugar cravings. And depending on what your goals are and your activity level, I usually recommend starting with one gram of protein for every pound of lean body mass. And that can go up. And another tip, add in three to five resistance training workouts per week. So working out and building muscle can help improve insulin sensitivity. After your workouts, insulin sensitivity can be at its highest, meaning it's a great time to consume carbohydrates as your muscle and liver cells probably have a capacity to store them for short-term energy. So guys, if you don't have a workout program yet, I recommend you take our Live Lean quiz. It's a program selector to choose the best workout for you based on your fitness level, access to equipment, and your goals. And another tip guys is always improve your sleep. So lack of quality of sleep increases the production of the stress hormone cortisol, which can then increase the cravings for insulin spiking sugary foods. So check out this post right here on the best foods to improve sleep. So even though your genotype is fixed, the expression of your genes known as your phenotype is directly influenced by the foods you eat, your environment, and your lifestyle. This means your phenotype can be controlled by your daily actions. For example, the foods you consume, the amount of exercise you do, and the quality of your sleep that you get all stimulate your hormonal system to send fat burning or fat storing messages to your body. No matter how much exercise you do or how little you eat, if those actions are excessive, they will throw your body's hormones out of balance, which can turn your body into a fat storing machine. So guys, if you're not sure what to eat, how to eat, how to make it taste delicious, check out one of our cookbooks. You can check out our nutrition bundle as well. It has meal plans, recipes, step-by-step -step cooking videos. It has it all in their grocery list. Go check it out. Get on the living wagon with us and create the body that you want and maintain it forever. So with that said, guys, thanks for watching and keep living lean.